We're coming down from a solar storm that's brought a roar over many parts of the world with another storm on its way. And a new bright region has emerged on the Earth-facing sun. What does that mean for radio propagation? Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week gets very exciting. We're coming down from a solar storm from some fast wind that's been hitting us over the past few days, and it's brought a roar of views to many parts of the world. And we're not done. We have another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth's strike zone here in a few days, and it may promise to be even a bigger storm. It's kind of hard to tell as of yet, but it could give us some aurora once again down to mid-latitudes. Not too bad for a solar minimum, don't you think? And that's not even the whole story. We also have a bright region that has emerged on the Earth-facing sun right now, and this is great news for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders. It's not enough to boost us all the way back up into marginal radio propagation conditions, but it has boosted us a little bit and kind of taken the sting out of the poor propagation we're dealing with right now. And the nice thing is that these conditions will continue easily over the next few days before things really begin to tank. Switching to our MFLAR threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be extremely low, and this is the story at solar minimum. And by proxy, that means the solar flux continues to be low. We did get a little bit of a boost on the 14th from that emerging uh, active region that kind of popped out on the Earth-facing disk, but then it stopped growing. It just kind of stalled, and it's been pretty much staring at us ever since. So unfortunately, we never made it up to the marginal levels for radio propagation, and things that kind of look like they've topped off now and may be getting that downward decline. So we may only have a few more days for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders to enjoy a little bit of dayside propagation before things really begin to tank. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've been kind of bumping around between unsettled and active conditions back on the 11th and 12th, just in time for aurora season to start at high latitudes in the northern hemisphere. We got hit by a pocket of fast wind that brought us a little bit of aurora. Then things settled down for a day or two, and then we got hit by some more fast wind, and that brought us up to active conditions that actually gave us a decent bout of aurora, clear down to mid-latitudes. And then after that, we'd settled down a little bit, but not too much before we got hit again. And this time we're still getting aurora. That's what's happening now. We've seen aurora at mid-latitudes. It's given you aurora photographers a lot of chances, which is phenomenal, especially considering we're so close to solar minimum. And the show's not yet over. With Earth as rattled as it is now, the next bit of fast wind that's going to hit us here in the next couple of days could really bump us up to storm levels this time. So your aurora photographers, don't put away your cameras just yet. And although the solar storms as of late have not been all that strong, what they've lacked in intensity, they've more than made up for in duration and frequency. And it's allowed many, many field reporters to get gorgeous shots like this in Russia and in Finland. It's the beginning of the aurora season up there. And in Sweden. And they've seen aurora in Estonia. And it's been all over Scotland. Aurora has been seen in, the, in Norfolk in the UK. And as we pass over the Pacific, it was seen in Iceland. And as we travel to the Western Hemisphere, it was all over Canada, even with all the wildfires that are burning there. We saw it in Manitoba and in the Yukon and the Northwest Territories. We saw aurora in Saskatchewan and Alberta. And it's even dipped into the upper tier of the United States. We've seen it in multiple places in Michigan and also in Minnesota. And down south, it was seen in New Zealand.
So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can immediately see is that there's not a lot going on on the backside. The one big coronal hole you do see, that region that's on the stereo's west limb, that is actually rotated into Earth view already. It's the region that's going to be sending us some fast wind here in the next few days. But behind that, there's not a lot going on. So your Aurora photographers, get your shots in with this storm because the next two weeks are easily going to be very dull. Now you amateur radio operators, we do have a bright region that's rotating into stereo's view now, but I'd bet money that this is also a spotless region because it just doesn't look all that bright. So once this region rotates into Earth view here in about, oh, seven to ten days, it may not boost the solar flux all that much, and we're probably going to have to deal with poor radio propagation conditions for the foreseeable future. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the fast wind from that coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone. And at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting moderate storm level conditions. In fact, they're giving us about a 50% chance of a moderate level storm. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions with about a 15 to 20% chance of a minor storm. Now, at high latitudes, we are expecting storming to go easily in through the weekend and probably into early next week. At mid-latitudes, we might drop back down to unsettled conditions, but we could easily boost back up to active and possibly even storm conditions, considering the Earth has been so incredibly rattled over the last week or two with all the fast wind we've been getting. So the storm is, is, is easily going to make Earth very upset. So your roar photographers, definitely make sure you get your shots in because this is going to be the last chance you're going to have easily over the next two weeks. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. Even though we have region 2718 on the Earth-facing sun right now, it's just not a big flare producer. So you GPS operators, you should be extremely happy. We have no risk for radio blackouts. But amateur radio operators and emergency responders, it's a slightly different story. Region 2718 isn't big enough to give us any decent boost to the solar flux, so we're still sitting at poor levels for radio propagation, and this will easily continue over this next week and might even begin to tank further as we go into next week. Now, as far as the radiation storms are concerned, we do have a warning out because we are at solar minimum and the cosmic ray flux is penetrating a bit more than it normally does. So if you are a frequent flyer who flies more than about 800 hours annually and you typically fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, there is a marginal warning for radiation dose right now for you. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is very exciting. We're winding down from one solar storm and we're getting ready for another. We have some fast wind that's going to be hitting Earth in a few days from a coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone. And this storm should give us a decent punch because Earth has already been rattled by a few other storms recently. So your aurora photographers definitely keep your batteries charged because we could get some aurora down to mid-latitudes. Now, amateur radio operators, well, you're not quite so excited. We could get some aurora propagation from these storms, but boy, the bands sure get noisy on the night side during these solar storms, so you'll have to deal with that. Plus, we have that region that's, that's kind of emerging on the Earth-facing sun, but it's just kind of stalled there, so it's not really boosting the solar flux very much. So radio propagation on the bands on the Earth's day side is not all that great either, and it looks like it's going to continue to be this way easily for the foreseeable future. Now, the only really good news outside of Aurora photographers or GPS operators, you guys are enjoying some decent dayside reception, and as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora, of course, your reception should be top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.